Most kitchen knife sets are a waste of money because they come with knives that you'll never use. So which knives are truly essential? In this video, I reveal the only two knives you need. I'll also give you my take on knives that aren't essential, but are nice to have as you add to your collection over time. At the end, I'll let you know about a few knife sets that are actually worth buying and explain why. So if you're starting completely from scratch, or you're ready to throw out your old knives and invest in better quality, more functional pieces, keep watching. The first knife that every home cook should own is a chef's knife. With its wide curved blade, it's the ultimate all-purpose knife. In fact, if you're on a budget or just want the most minimal kitchen setup possible, you could get by with just a chef's knife. It's that versatile. Chef's knives range from six to 14 inches, but an eight inch knife is the most versatile option. It's big enough to cut watermelon, pineapple, lettuce heads, large cuts of meat, and butternut squash, but it's still nimble for dicing onions, mincing herbs, and peeling fruits. These knives weigh between 7 and 10 ounces, and the blade profile is wide, usually around 1.5 to 2 inches. After chopping, you can use the blade to scoop ingredients from the cutting board and transfer them to a bowl or a pan. You can also use the side of the blade to crush small ingredients like garlic cloves. The heel of the blade, which is the thickest part closest to the handle, is ideal for dense ingredients like sweet potatoes, carrots, and squash. The end of the blade is thinner and comes to a sharp point which you can use to pierce foods and make precise cuts. There are two main styles of chef's knives, western and Japanese. Western style chef's knives typically have a more curved edge and thicker, heavier blades made of softer steel. This style of knife is more durable and resistant to chipping, but since the steel is relatively soft, the edge requires more frequent sharpening. Japanese style chef's knives usually have a straighter edge and thinner, lighter blades made of harder steel. You don't need to sharpen knives with harder steel as often, but they're more prone to chipping, so you have to be careful with bones, frozen food, and other hard ingredients. Go Western style if you prefer a heavier knife and cook a lot of dense foods like meat and root vegetables. Japanese style is ideal if you mainly eat fruits, vegetables, fish, and other ingredients that require more precision. Since you'll use your chef's knife every day, and in most cases multiple times a day, spending more for a brand you'll love is a good investment. Although there are many great brands, I recommend Wusthof, Zwilling, Made In, and Victorinox for Western style chef's knives. For Japanese style, I recommend Shun, Mac, and Oisha. Besides a chef's knife, the only other knife that you really need as a home cook is an eight or nine inch serrated bread knife. The serrated edge acts like a saw to break through the bread's crusty exterior without tearing the soft inside. You could slice bread with a chef's knife, but the non-serrated edge won't cut through a crunchy crust as easily. You have to apply more pressure, which can flatten the loaf. While excellent for bread, this knife is also helpful for delicate foods like overripe tomatoes. The serrated edge slices through cleanly without turning the tomato tomato into mush. A bread knife is also great for cakes, sandwiches, muffins, bagels, and any other ingredient that's crusty or waxy on the outside and soft inside. Another benefit of this style knife is that you don't need to sharpen it often. Although the points of the teeth will eventually dull, it takes years since the recessed part of the edge only makes contact with the food and not the cutting board. Since you won't use a bread knife nearly as much as a chef's knife, you don't need to invest much. Go for an affordable brand with a comfortable handle like this one from Mercer. Pairing knives have short three to four inch blades. They give you greater control for tasks like peeling apples, coring tomatoes, removing potato eyes, deveining shrimp, and slicing strawberries. If you search the internet for essential kitchen knives, Almost every article and video says you need three knives, a chef's knife, a bread knife, and a paring knife. So this may be controversial, but I don't believe paring knives are essential for most home cooks. If you have a chef's knife and a cheap peeler, you don't really need a paring knife. You can use the tip of the chef's knife for smaller ingredients and the peeler to peel apples and other produce. Most tutorials about how to use a paring knife feature a skilled chef peeling an apple by holding a paring knife in one hand and rotating the apple in the other hand. You don't need to be a pro chef to do this, but it does require some skill and practice. For most home cooks, using a peeler is easier, safer, and won't waste as much fruit. I understand that paring knives can make the job easier for a pro chef who does a lot of precise work, but unless you're regularly hulling strawberries, coring tomatoes, or making small intricate garnishes, you don't need a paring knife. They're nice to have, but not essential. 
Another knife that's nice to have but not essential is a 4 to 7 inch utility knife. This knife is a hybrid between a chef's knife and a paring knife. Compared to an 8 inch chef's knife, the utility knife gives you better control when slicing small fruits, cutting the crust off bread, removing melon rinds, and peeling oranges. But since it's longer than a paring knife, you can slice larger foods and cut more ingredients. Although I don't consider this knife essential, it's one I use almost daily because it's light and easy to maneuver. If you have kids, it's a great knife to cut cut fruits and cheese and quickly chop food into bite-sized pieces. Because of its versatility, the utility knife is the first I'd recommend after buying a chef's knife and a bread knife. The Nakiri is another knife that's an excellent addition, but certainly not essential. This Japanese style knife is designed specifically for chopping vegetables. It has a thin straight edge with a subtle curve towards the end of the blade which is squared off with no tip. The spine is completely straight, and as you can see, the blade profile is rectangular. Most Nakiri blades are 5 to 7 inches long. Almost the entire edge makes contact with the board with each cut. This allows you to make straight, uniform cuts. You don't have to rock the knife back and forth to complete the cut. For example, slices of bell pepper will stick together if you don't cut all the way through the skin. But since the Nakiri's edge is straight, it cuts through the entire pepper in one stroke. Since the blade is the same width from heel to tip, weight is evenly distributed. Knives that come to a pointy tip are heavier towards the heel. The even weight distribution makes fast, up and down chopping more effortless. The weight of the blade does most of the work. Nikiri knives are shaped like the Chinese cleaver, but since the blade is narrower and lighter, it's more agile. If vegetables are a significant part of your diet, a Nikiri knife is a worthwhile investment for your kitchen. The Santoku is a Japanese style all-purpose knife with a wide blade between 5 and 8 inches long. It's similar to a chef's knife, but the edge is not as curved, and the spine is straight from the handle to the end of the blade, where it bends down at a steeper angle. Like the Nakiri, the Santoku is great for up and down chopping, since a good portion of the edge makes contact with the board on each cut. However, since the edge has a slight curve, you can also use it to rock back and forth. Although this is a highly versatile knife, there's nothing you can do with it that you couldn't already do with a chef's knife. The straighter edge is a slight advantage when chopping vegetables, but it doesn't make a significant difference. Plus, the tip of a Santoku isn't as pointy as a chef's knife, so it's not the best tool for breaking down a whole chicken or turkey, or any tasks that require piercing. If you want to add another all-purpose knife to your collection, a Santoku is a nice option, but another option is to buy a second chef's knife. Having two chef's knives is not essential, but it can be convenient. Let's say you're making a stir-fry. You can use one knife to chop the chicken, then grab the other knife and a clean cutting board for the vegetables. It's more efficient to wash two knives at the end rather than interrupting your cooking. Two chef's knives also allow you to prepare a meal with a partner. I mentioned up front that most kitchen knife sets are a waste of money, but that's not always true. If the set includes the knives you want without any unnecessary extras, you can actually save money. The cost of the set is usually less than buying each knife individually. For example, this Wusthof Classic set includes a paring knife, bread knife, and chef's knife. The set costs $295 on Wusthof.com, but if you bought the three knives individually, you'd pay around $400. Here's another example. The Zwilling Pro set includes a paring knife, a serrated utility knife, and a chef's knife. This set costs $249 on Zwilling.com, but if you bought each knife individually, you'd pay around $320. This made-in set includes a chef's knife, a bread knife, a nakiri, and a paring knife. The set is currently listed on made-in cookware for $349, but the individual knives bought separately add up to $406. The point is that you can find deals on sets, but buying knives individually ensures you don't pay for ones you don't need. It also allows you to buy less expensive brands for knives that you won't use as often. If you're ready to start your collection, I'll link to my favorite essential and nice to have kitchen knives in the video description. Those are affiliate links, so I'll earn a commission if you click and buy, but at no extra cost to you. If this was helpful, check out this video where I highlight the best kitchen knife brands made in the USA, Europe, and Japan. And for more videos like this, click the logo to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.